Hey, hello guys. Good morning everyone. This is Priya from Alpha Group of Institutions, your English teacher. So today we are going to discuss chapter 6. This is Jodi's font and the second half of the lesson. In the last session we have discussed the first half that is scene 1 and scene 2 and today we are going to discuss the scene 3. So before that let us have a quick recap on what we have discussed in the last session. Let me summarize this. So this lesson, this is Jodi's phone begins with Jodi being unable to keep the phone out of his mind. He expresses his concern to his father, Penny. His father is Penny who was resting as he had just been saved from death. He was bitten by a snake that is a rattlesnake and Jodi killed a doe. It means a deer to use its heart and liver to exact, extract poison out of his father. Now the doe, this deer had a baby fawn and Jody was worried about it. He wanted to bring it home and raise it. Penny, though it would be ungrateful of them to leave the fawn to starve and thus he agreed. Next, Jody convinces his mother about the same thing. Who at first in reluctant but not hearing the views of Millville and Dr. Wilson agrees to let Jody bring it home. She was okay with it if Jody would give it his share of milk as they had nothing else to feed the baby fawn. Now, Millville gave Jody a ride on his horse and suddenly Jody realized he did not want company. He did not want anyone to sue, see his disappointment if he was unable to find the phone. And on the other hand, he did not want to share his loving moment on finding it either. Thus, he sent Millville away by saying some reasons. He begins searching for the phone and sees a group of buzzards, it means vulture-like birds, near the killed doe, killed, near the fawn's mother who he scares away by throwing a bow. He continues searching and finally finds the fawn looking at him with his bright eyes. So these are the things which we have discussed in the first two sessions children. Isn't it? Like uh, how they were father Jody and his father Penny went to the forest and later how they, how his uh, father uh, got bitten by a rattle, rattlesnake. How he got bitten by a rattlesnake and then they killed a deer, a doe to get a heart and liver from it to extract the poison from Jody's father. So later when they killed uh, they just realized that they made a baby fawn motherless, an um, orphan. There is no mother for the baby and they, they were they were just feeling it's not they, they, they didn't do they felt it was unfair for them to leave the baby fawn in the forest. So this story takes us how this Jodi was affected mentally with that baby fawn's thoughts and how he convinced his father and how he convinced his mother. Later, how the doctor supported Jody and his father to bring back the baby fawn and raise it. So, later, how his mother agreed after that. Then, how Millville took Jody to the forest, the way they searched, the discussion between them, everything we have discussed in the first two sessions. And today, we are going to discuss about the third scene, like how they found the baby fawn, how Jody found the baby fawn, how he brought back it to the home and later how he raised that baby fawn. This is all the story about and small summarization about what we have discussed in the earlier session. Okay children, so let us see how the story goes today. Okay, thank you. The third part starts like this. I mean the third scene on from the story. Movement directly, movement directly in front of him startled him so that 
he trembled backward the fawn lifted its face to his the fawn lifted its face to his it turned its head with a wide wondering motion and shook him through with a stare of its liquid eyes it was quivering it made no effort to rise or run jodi could not trust himself to move he whispered it's me the fawn lifted its nose scenting him he reached out one hand and laid it on the soft neck the touch made him delirious he moved forward on all fours until he was close beside it he put his arms around its body a light convulsion passed over it but it did not stir but it did not stir it means here now jodi in this in this third scene jodi was really shocked because he experienced some movement in front of him he was searching for the uh, fawn in the bushes right so when he was searching for the uh, uh, fawn suddenly he noticed some movement in the bushes in front of him and he fell backward finally it was the baby fawn the fawn lifted its face with a wide and wondering eyes it was looking at jodi and start stared at him it was just looking look staring means looking for some time at some point it was looking it was staring at him with its liquid eyes means with pitiful eyes losing his mom staying alone with its liquid eyes it stood in front of him and uh, it also left jodi to shook the fawn was shaking with a slight rapid motion because it was shivering and also it was afraid also and now this baby it sat still and made no effort to run even though when it saw jodi this fawn did not run because it is already exhausted it was so scared it was feeling alone it found something some a bonding with jodi and it, it didn't run after seeing him on the other hand jodi also was not able to move but he he was not able to move because he felt that the fawn may get scared so what happened jodi whispered jodi sp- spoke slowly like it's me baby fawn it's me the fawn now sniffed it means it smelled it smelled jodi the baby fawn smelled jodi now jodi reached the fawn he, he touched the fawn with one with one of his hand he reached his hand and laid it on the soft neck he touched the baby's fawn soft neck and this touch of jodi jodi's touch made the fawn excited and he moved forward in attempt to be close to jodi when jodi was trying to move touch the touch and pamper the baby fawn uh, when uh, the baby fawn got touched by jodi it got excited like a puppy how a baby i mean the puppies dogs when we touch them they feel so happy like that it also felt happy and it came close to jodi now jodi put his arms around the fawn which made the fawn shiver slightly but he did not stir which means he was not frightened but comforted after touching the fawn now jodi lifted the fawn in his arms when he lifted it it was little uh, scared like the movement but even though it was shivering it was not afraid it the, it was not trying to run away from jodi but it just laid in his hands comfortably it was staying in jodi's hands comfortably okay <clears throat> he stroked its sides as gently as though the fawn were a china deer and he might break it its skin was very soft it was sleek and clean and he had a sweet scent of grass he rose slowly and lifted the fawn from the ground now what happened its legs hung limply and they were surprisingly long and he had to hoist the fawn as high as possible under his arm he was afraid that it might kick and bleat at sight and smell of its mother 
he skirted the clearing and pushed his way into the thicket it was difficult to fight through with his burden the fawn's legs caught in the bushes and he could not lift his own with freedom he tried to shield its face from prickling vines its head bobbed with his stride his heart thumped with the marvel of its acceptance of him he reached the trail and walked as fast as he could until he came to the intersection with the road home he stopped to rest and set the fawn down on its dangling legs it wavered on them it looked at him and bleated it looked at him and bleated here jody was just pampering he was just caressing he was touching softly the both the sides of the uh, fawn's body very gently and also uh, it was very fragile it was very sensitive like as if it is a china deer this baby was very soft and very clean and even it was having a smell of grass the body of the baby fawn is smelling like a grass and looks look very clean now jody lifted the fawn from the ground and like uh, as we all hold our puppies right how we take our puppies and we will carry them like that he was carrying the fawn now he lifted it with his arms and he was carrying the fawn now the fawn's legs were quite long so that jody had to hold him as high as possible under his arm because uh, the baby fawn is uh, looking very small but its legs are very long so when he was uh, uh, jody is also a small by right when he was lifting the fawn the legs were touching the ground it was very long so jody has to lift little more high than his height so he was trying to lift the uh, baby fawn little uh, he has to hold him as high as possible in his tiny arms and now what happened let us see uh, yes we have read this uh, paragraph now okay he said enchanted i will carry you after i get my breath he remembered his father saying that a fawn would follow if it had first been carried he started away slowly the fawn stared after him he came back to it and stroked it and walked away again it took a few wobbling steps towards him and cried piteously it was willing to follow him it belonged to him it was his own he was lightheaded with the with his joy he wanted to fondle it to run and romp with it to call to it to come to him he dared not alarm it he picked it up and carried it in front of him over his two arms it seemed to him that he walked without effort so here jody was filled with happiness he was delighted as he was like it told that the fawn that he would carry it once he had taken a bit of rest so jody recalled that his father told that once he uh, for once uh, like what he told is he remembers that his father was telling him that a fawn will follow you once you have carried it for a bit first so in order to impress in order to get the fawn's love jody's father once told if we carry if we lift the baby fawn and carry for some time and if we leave again on the ground it will follow us immediately it thinks us as if it uh, we are uh, we are its mother so it will follow he remembers that now jody star he lifts for some time and now he keeps the fawn down now jody started walking with small small steps and the fawn also walking with small small steps after him walking after jody now jody came back across to caress it and went forward again now again jody stopped and came back and he touched it caressed it gently and again he started walking forward again now this time this fawn took a few weak steps in jody's direction as he cried now it is just hesitating to walk although wobbling jody was overjoyed 
by the fact that it was willing to go with him which made the fawn his own even though sometimes it is walking fast it was not able to walk it was just falling down whatever the steps it is taking jodi was very happy because the fawn is not running away uh, running away from him it is not afraid of him it is willing to go along with jodi then now that is why he is very happy and he was so overjoyed jodi was also very happy because he didn't even think properly and clear he didn't even uh, thought of how to raise that baby but he was happy as it is willing to be with him and at that moment jodi wanted to caress it with all his desire play with it and call it towards him but he did not want to frighten it so once he felt that that particular baby fawn is belongs to him he was very happy and he want to play it he want to gently caress it he want to love it but he was sure that he don't want to make the fawn get frightened he don't want to frighten it then now baby he the jodi picked the baby fawn in his arms again and walked happily without any fear because the, when the when jodi and the baby fawn met for the first time both were new so both were hesitating now when they got was i mean when they got close and then started walking and playing there now jodi has some confidence and he took the baby fawn in his arms effortlessly it means like carrying a baby puppy okay now his arms began to ache and he was forced to stop again when he walked on the fawn followed him at once he said enchanted i will carry you after i get my breath he remembered his father saying that a fawn would follow if it had first been carried uh children i think we have finished this one now right wait a second yes we have to read from here now he allowed it to walk a little distance then picked it up again the distance home was nothing he could have walked all day and into the night carrying it and watching it follow he was wet with sweat but a light breeze blew through the june morning cooling him the sky was as clear as spring water in a blue china cup he came to the clearing it was fresh and green after the night's rain he fumbled with the latch and was finally ob- obliged obliged to set down the fawn to manage it then he had an idea he would walk into the house into penny's bedroom with the fawn walking behind him but at the steps the fawn barked and refused to climb them he picked it up and went to his father penny lay with closed eyes penny lay with closed eyes it means here jodi stopped unwillingly and his arms had started aching because he is also a small boy when he is lifting the baby fawn maybe the weight we can't hold weight for more than some time right now when he was walking automatically he is getting stopped and his hands also was paining now the fawn followed him as he walked again so whenever he feels it is paining when he keeps the fawn down now the fawn again starts walking behind him after some time again he lifts the fawn and he will walk when he gets pain in his hand he keeps the fawn down and again it starts walking behind him so jodi would only allow the fawn to walk only a few steps because jodi thinks the baby fawn is very tired and very little one small one so he don't want the baby fawn to walk more so he allows the baby steps to walk so only few steps and then again he picks it up again and his home was almost nearer so he came near to the house now jodi could have picked it up and watched it follow all day but he was tired and sweating because he was searching for it 
he went in the hall searched in all the bushes later he was he is also a small kid right he was just picking it lifting in his arms walking 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 still he is very interested he is very curious to play with the fawn and to pick the fawn but his body didn't support him and he was really tired and was sweating a light breeze a light air helped him dry his sweat because it was a june morning it was the morning of the june so it was a june's morning so there is no it's not too much cold or it's not uh, summer time it is uh, like a middle in the place and the sky was so clear that it had been compared to spring water how much clear the sky was the sky was compared to what means it was compared to the spring water in the blue china cup it's so blue china cup spring water like it is just comparing a blue color water in a cup and he reached the clearing at last which was green and fresh after the showers last night it means finally he came out of the uh, the shrubs from the thick forest and when he saw the ground it was really very green and fresh because it was raining last night it rained last night so it was uh, very difficult for jodi to open the latch of the house but he could do it once he set the fawn down while carrying the fawn he was not able to open the lock of the house then again he left the baby fawn down and he opened it at first he thought of making the fawn follow directly into penny's room his father's room and surprise him so jodi was planning that he has to take the fawn he wants because he he was he was happy to see that fawn is following him so he wants to take the fawn in the following way to the directly to the it directly to his father's room to main uh, like uh, to make his father surprise to surprise his father but now the fawn is refused to climb the stairs it was not able to climb the stairs not able to walk on the steps so jodi was unable to make the fawn to follow him so he picked it again with his arms to he and he took the, he took the baby fawn to the father's bedroom and his daddy was resting with closed eyes <coughs> here jodi's father was taking rest <coughs> now listen jodi called paul look penny turned he said jodi stood beside him the fawn clutched hard against him it seemed to penny that the boy's eyes were as bright as the fawn he said i am glad you found him it means jodi called his father and asked him pa look here because uh, he was closing his eyes and resting no he, so he called he wake he made his father to wake up now jodi's father penny turned his head and he stood beside him he was really surprised after seeing the fawn after seeing the fawn now the fawn grasped him firmly penny could see jodi's eyes as bright as like glowing as the fawn's so both jodi and the fawn both are happy and both of them both of their eyes are glowing with happiness so now penny told his i mean penny is expressing he is also showing his happiness over jodi's having being able to find the fawn now even jodi's father is also happy because his son finally found the fawn as they felt it was not an unfair thing to leave the baby fawn in the forest so he also felt very happy okay now jodi then went to the kitchen the fawn wobbled after him a pan of morning's milk stood in the kitchen safe the cream had risen on it he skimmed the cream into the jug he poured milk into a small gourd he held it out he held it out to the fawn it buttered it suddenly smelling the milk he saved it precariously from spilling over the floor it could make nothing of the milk in the ground he dipped his fingers in the milk and thrust them into fawn's soft wet mouth it sucked greedily when he withdrew them it bleated frantically and buttered him 
<coughs> he dipped his fingers again and as the fawn sucked, he lowered them slowly into the milk, sucked and snorted. It stamped its small hooves impatiently. As long as he held his fingers below the level of the milk, the fawn was content. It closed its eyes dreamily. It was ecstasy to feel its tongue against his hand. Its small tail flicked back and forth. The last of the milk vanished in a swill of foam and gurgling. Okay. It means Jodi went straight to the kitchen after showing the fawn to his father. Now he went to the kitchen because he, had, he definitely knew that the baby fawn is very hungry. So he went to the kitchen in, to take some milk and feed the baby fawn. Now the baby fawn wobble means it is walking like jumping. You don't know how the baby deer walks like jumping, jumping. This baby fawn wobbled after him behind Jodi to the kitchen. There, the, a pan of morning's milk stood in the kitchen safe. It means when Jodi went straight to the kitchen, after that the fawn also followed him with his weak steps. In the kitchen, there is a pan filled with morning's milk, which was reserved but cream had formed on it. Cream had formed it because it was a morning milk. When we keep the milk aside for some time, the cream, the cream butter of the milk comes to the top layer of the milk. So in the same way, the, uh, the cream of the milk has formed on the layer of the milk. Because it is, the milk was the morning's milk. And now, this fellow, Jody, he skimmed the cream and put it into a jug while he poured the milk in that utensil made of small gourd. Small god means these bottle gods are there. No? Out of that there will be, they used to do some vessel, sorts of vessels in the village areas. So what he did is, he just removed all the cream because the cream may not digest for the baby fawn. Cow's milk is different from deer's milk, right? So it cannot digest the thick milk. So he just drained the cream into the separate jug and poured the milk into the small god, a cup like thing. But the fawn smelled the milk, but it didn't drink. Now, Jody saved the milk for being smelled because as it is too much, he just poured a little bit of uh, milk in the cup, but it didn't drink. Now what happened, the, because the fawn could not drink the milk out of the god, it, it is not a dog, right? It can't lick the milk from the cup. It needs Jody's help because it is a small baby, it used to get milk, used to suck milk from its mother. So when we is giving from the god, it is not able to drink that. So it needs help. Now what happened, Jody dipped his fingers, he kept his fingers in the milk and put them in the soft wet mouth. It, the fawn's mouth is very soft and wet, right? Now he was dipping his finger. He's just putting his finger in the milk and taking that uh, finger and keeping near the fawn's mouth. Now immediately, the fawn is sucking Jody's finger very eagerly because it is very hungry. It is out of milk. No mother is there, right? It has no mother. It can't even lick the water. So it is just trying to suck water from a uh, drug suck the milk from Jody's fingers. Jody was, the fawn was really very hungry and started sucking greedily. He was hungry because that is why when Jody took his fingers out of his mouth, again it was crying and hitting Jody with his head. Because it is asking milk, it needs the milk. So it started hitting Jody with his head and started crying for milk. Again, Jody started putting his fingers in the milk and again in the fawn's mouth. So, in the same way, he just gradually, he lowered his fingers. This, here you can see, ma. Here he is keeping his fingers in his mouth. Now, he started keeping, dipping his fingers here and he kept here. Now, the baby fawn is bending down little bit. Again, he dipped fingers here and again he kept here. Now the Jodi, uh, the fawn is bending still here. Later like that, he moved, he lowered his hand gradually to the cup. Now this 
deer is also bringing its head gradually in order to drink the milk as it was very hungry so he gently lowered it as to bring it to near to the utensil that vessel the fawn became impatient it was hungry it was really impatient it was not able to stand patiently suddenly it blew the milk as it sucked it and made sounds the fawn was really calm till jody kept his fingers inside the milk and he drank with eyes closed in satisfaction when it came to the vessel when jody was taking the hands out of the vessel now again it was not drinking the milk it's not drinking it's just sniffing for jody's hands smell so jody understood without my hand this baby fawn will not drink well so in this corner one side corner of the cup jody kept his hand and the other side it started drinking the milk thinking that jody is giving that so it is trusting jody only when jody's hands are in the milk pot only it is drinking if he removes his hand out of it it will not drink so that is how he made him he made the baby fawn to drink and the baby fawn also drank the whole milk very happily and satisfactorily now jody felt very happy on feeling its tongue he felt the tongue of the baby fawn on his hand he felt the sense was very made him very happy and his small tail moved back and forth like a baby like you know not the puppy how it wags its tail like that the fawn started wagging its tail back and forth the milk disappeared quickly forming foam which was marked by a bubbling sound so totally it completed drinking the milk that is what the story is about children okay so this story was written by majori kinnan rawlings majori kinnan rawlings okay so there are uh, in this lesson there are no book back exercise children so your activity for this lesson will be like you have to read all the question answers from this lesson and you have to write a home test okay as usual you have to read the question answers from this story and write your home test get the sign from your parents and post it in the group the students uh, who are coming to the school can show your home test to the teachers and get sign from the teachers also no issues okay children so thank you for staying with me thank you for being with me thanks a lot children bye this is priya signing off from alpha group of institutions take care children goodbye